Tarot. I'm here with your May general reading and a few astrological notes on the craziness that we're all feeling these days. In addition to lockdowns, quarantines, and viruses, um, we also have some major political things going on and some fairly significant dynamics within our families and even deep down inside. We're all transforming and we're all just trying to keep up with the changes. But right now seems to be a time of really clearing out the past and letting things go. Moving forward only when we're completely certain. And so we're getting a bit of support from the planets. I'm going to say support <laughs> as opposed to challenging because, you know, it's all in perspective, right? <laughs> but May's pretty intense in terms of its alignments and, um, and various... Uh, happening. So I'm just going to go through my list. It's taken me a few days to put this information together and I am behind on these reports. As you can see, it's, you know, May the 4th. So, um, yeah, I'm going to just start with May 5th. So that's tomorrow, it's tomorrow in my world. Um, I'm, who knows when you're going to be reading this, but I'm sure it'll be helpful then as well. May 5th is the big lunar nodes are changing. So for the last uh, 18 months or so, we've been dealing with, or yeah, 18 months, we've been dealing with um, Cancer and Capricorn, um, the Cancer Capricorn cycle, and so one of the one of the interesting things that I that I found when I did the research was that uh, the when the lunar nodes are in Cancer and Capricorn, it tends to herald important points in history. And ironically enough, just at the tail end of Cancer and Capricorn, the last time that it happened, we were gifted with 9-11. So a couple of months ahead of this switch up, well, I don't need to tell you where we're at. So thankfully, we're going to be moving into the Gemini Sagittarius cycle of the lunar nodes which is a much lighter energy. Capricorn and Cancer, you know, these are, you know, the, the themes around both of those signs. Cancer, it's very much around family and your intimate, closest uh, home type relationships, relationships with your mother and so on. In Capricorn, it's about your work-life balance. And uh, Capricorn is, is very disciplined and not about fun at all. So we're flipping out of that archetype and into the Gemini Sagittarius one. But before we can truly enjoy those dynamics, like I said, later in the fall, we have Venus going retrograde. So there's purpose in that. And uh, Venus is in retrograde from May 13th until June 25th. But just like Mercury retrograde, we have shadow periods in front and at the tail end. So really we're not clear of this Venus retrograde cycle until about July 29th. This particular Venus retrograde will be very testing to all of our closest relationships, severe in, in some cases, and that coincides with when Venus is square Neptune. So uh, that happened on May 3rd, so that was yesterday. And it'll be happening again on the 20th and then again July 27th. So these are points where um, it brings a lot of tension uh, and there's a lot of questioning as to what's real and what's imagined. So uh, things also like um, mental health crises can also occur during these times. And, um, you know, Venus retrograde only goes, uh, only does this. Um, once every yeah, year and a half to two years. So the last time that we went through this, it was in Scorpio in 2018. And that was all about uh, death, rebirth, and transformation. So this time around, um, in terms of the global aspect of things, the kinds of dynamics that can occur during this time are things like civil war, <laughs> Um, because freedom of expression, the Gemini aspect of freedom, freedom of speech and expression, the themes tend to be, uh, be pushed way up front. 
The other thing that's happening is May 16th to the 20th is when our sun is in alignment with Alcyon, which is uh, the galactic center. So at this time, for about four days, we're going to get blasted with a whole bunch of uh, divine feminine energy, which is great, but, um, but it can also bring a bit of chaos. And in the mix with everything else, it's definitely a time to stay alert. Uh, continuing with our theme of Gemini, May 22nd, we have a new moon in Gemini. And this is going to be sort of our, you know, if I were to make any plans to do anything, um, of course, within reason, uh, within our current circumstances, uh, May 22nd would definitely be the day. It's going to be the day when we're going to be feeling a little lighter and probably a little bit more motivated, you know, maybe not as consumed by the fear um, energies that have been swirling around us all. Uh, for the last couple of months. Um, but I do want to also caution you that uh, we are also coming into the eclipse cycle. So June 5th, uh, we're going to be in, um, we're going to be dealing with an eclipse that uh, has some very, very severe aspects to it. So watch out for being impulsive, uh, losing control of your temper, and um, also there is the danger of war. And if you do live in an area where, um, where earthquakes are common, you may want to take extra precautions around the first week of June. So um, that's about all that I have for now. But I hope you enjoy your readings, and uh, I'll be back with more this month. Thanks again for joining me. Hey there Pisces, how you doing? I hope you found the astrology information helpful. And now we're going to see what Tarot has to say for Pisces for May 2020. Pisces, some big cards coming down in this reading so far. Wow. So let's take a look at the hidden energies. Well, we've got the Queen of Swords. She's been coming up a lot um, throughout these readings for May. Uh, it seems as though everyone's getting clear, you know. Uh, with the planets in retrograde, it's giving us an opportunity to review a lot of things and in our relationships and our work you know not to mention the circumstances of this quarantine and lockdown so let's take a look all right so Hmm. Page of Swords. Page of Swords usually has messages or at least has something to say. And then we've got the Ace of Swords, which I normally think of as truth. Um, we've got the Two of Cups as the foundation. The recent past, we have the Four of Wands, 
which is home and happiness and all that good stuff. And then uh, what's crowning everything is temperance, which is like patience. Or there could be a Sagittarius in your situation as well. In the short-term future, we've got the Emperor in the position of you. We have the Lovers. In your environment, we've got the Nine of Swords. So a little bit of anxiety in your, in your environment. In your hopes and fears, we have Strength. Oh, pardon me. I have been yawning in everybody's reading. It's terrible. And then we've got the death card as your final outcome. So, um, so let's take a look here. It looks to me like there is a total transformation coming in a relationship. Um, and you can feel it. And I guess there's part of you that's questioning your strength around it. And as I was thinking about that, there's toxicity. Um, and there's a fear of being single. Um, hmm. So let's go back to the center of your reading with the Page of Swords and clarify him. Let's tell this story in order. All right, so. Maybe there's been a lot of uh, communication coming in about some success. Why is the obstacle of truth? Okay, because you've got a plan. Um... So you have a plan around your love relationship. So let's just, you have a plan, Pisces. What's the plan? You have a plan either um, something to do with a Taurus or an Aries or you could be planning on getting pregnant or giving birth to something completely new which would transform a situation for sure. Let's just see here. Another card on the Two of Cups. I don't want to give this up. Um, yeah. Uh, issues around being self-sufficient. Um, maybe you're wondering if you have what you need in order to have a baby um, or to start this plan. Um, because it empowers you. So it's like 
it's like the ultimate in a non-codependent relationship where you are coming in whole with your own plans, with your own money, with your own security. Um, and this has been something you've been working on for a long time. Um, or you've been thinking about it for a long time. But you haven't been ready to make the move. And so, around patience, it's going to be a celebration. Celebration of the end of the old and the beginning of the new. Yeah, because you're turning your back on the past. Everything from the past is going away. Um, as many of us are having to let go of the lives uh, that we knew before. Yeah, and then we've got the Emperor here in your short-term outcome. This is about moving in a very um, particular, like a, an absolute, like you know exactly where you want to take this. And you want to be the one in charge. But you don't have all the information yet. But, you know, you're committed. You're committed to the direction you've chosen. So you, Pisces lover, can you give me a little bit more on what this is all about? Ugh. Sometimes it's tiring being in a partnership, right? And you're feeling emotional. Uh, because you're leaving things behind. Oh, anxiety. It's like in your environment, it's kind of like you know what's going on. Oh, ouch. Seven of Swords. Um, your intuition and, you know, the High Priestess also means secrets. Um... Yeah, I'm traveling. Something around travel. Moving from rough waters into smoother waters. Knight of Wands. So there could be a Leo in this situation too. Um, bit of a player. Oops. All right, so let's go right to the to the final outcome card here, the death card. Can we get some clarity on the death card? What is the death card all about here? There we go. Oh, the King of Cups. So, there could be a Scorpio around you. Um, your partner could be a water sign, a Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. And this relationship is either, um, is either headed for the end or total, total 
transformation. Um, you're going to get a message. And you're going to feel defeated. Hmm. So Pisces, you may be seeing the end of a relationship or the complete and total transformation of one for a new beginning. Look at that. I hadn't even looked down yet. But it's going to be like, wah, you know, like big deal, big deal. All right, so let's take one of the cards here from the Oracle of E and see what the Oracle of E has to offer. Hotline. So stay, uh, stay into your intuition um, because, you know, it's always pretty good, but it's especially good right now. And what other, yeah. Definitely going to be hearing from somebody. It's going to be a message that's key in this whole situation for you this month. So um, thanks so much for joining me, Pisces. We'll see you again.